Garza. Uh, I'm here to talk uh, about our uh, paper called the uh, Unlearning Symmetrical Motion. Uh, I'm from the University of British Columbia. Okay, so the idea is that we want to increase the motion quality of our uh, controllers by enforcing left right symmetry. So, uh, and, and we compare uh, and document four methods of doing so. Okay, so the mo motion synthesis methods are usually divided into two groups of kinematic and physics based methods. You already probably know that, but the, the point that I wanted to make here is that uh, kinematic method methods are usually. Uh, really uh, biased towards how humans walk, but if you don't, uh, uh, if you don't have uh, data or enforce a lot of uh, constraints, you usually uh, don't get, uh, uh, you don't uh, uh, always get a uh, motion that's uh, similar to how humans walk, and you might get something like this, which is uh, uh, doing what, what it's supposed to do, but it's not uh, really good for uh, motion synthesis. All right. So uh, we've heard a lot about reinforcement learning, so I won't talk, uh, spend a lot on this, but I just want to say that this is a great fit for physics-based uh, motion generation, but we have to think about uh, uh, generality versus expert knowledge. Like, uh, so uh, reinforcement learning gives you a general method uh, and really flexible method of uh, solving a lot of problems, but uh, you want to, uh, unless you uh, have a lot of constraints on, on your uh, solution, uh, you're not uh, always going to get uh, what you want. All right, so what we want to do is get rid of uh, 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 motions like these, uh, which, we, uh, which are asymmetric gates. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, so we want to, uh, uh, so we want to enforce symmetry. And why is that? It's because uh, symmetry is an indicator of gate pulse uh, in physiotherapy, and uh, 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 it's because asymmetric gates are related to impairments or injury. Like for example, if you see me walking like this, uh, you might think that uh, I have a problem in, in my uh, right leg. Well, I didn't do that so well, but uh, it, it should uh, get me to my next point, which is that violations of the symmetry are easy to spot. Uh, also, one more reason you uh, might want to use symmetry is that uh, it, uh, you might expect it to uh, give you faster learning because if you uh, just need, uh, if you have symmetry, you just need to learn uh, the motion for the right side and the left side comes with that. Okay? And uh, another reason is that as a big picture, you want to uh, incorporate expert knowledge into your system. And you can think of symmetry as just one type of constraints, and uh, there are more constraints that you can think of. <coughs> right. So uh, how do we define symmetry here? So uh, this is what I call a policy symmetry definition. So the idea is that if you, give, uh, if you have state and you can give that state to your policy, the action that you, uh, that you get uh, should be the same as if you uh, mirror the state first and uh, mirror the, the actions uh, as well. So if I give this motion, uh, give this state to, to my policy, and, and if I uh, mirror the, the action, I should uh, get the same uh, motion uh, action as I would have gotten if I had uh, given the uh, policy this state. All right, so how do we enforce symmetry in our models? So we, uh, we experimented with four models. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this slide, and there's a lot of stuff uh, in this slide, but uh, uh, I just wanted uh, everything to be uh, in the same place so that you can uh, see all of them at once. So, uh, so the first method is a data augmentation method uh, on the uh, top left there. Uh, so the idea is that you get a trajectory and you completely uh, uh, mirror all the states and the actions and you just add that to your data set and uh, try to learn, learn based on that. So this uh, might see, uh, seem the most natural and easy way to do doing uh, this, but the problem is that uh, if you are using uh, on, uh, on policy uh, reinforcement learning algorithms like, like PPO, uh, there are some uh, complications because uh, you can't uh, easily, ch uh, at least in theory, you can't easily change the distribution of data. But in practice, you can get this to work, it's just that uh, the results aren't that great. Uh, so the second method uh, is that uh, you can add uh, 
uh, you can add a symmetry penalty uh, to your loss function. So if, let's say you have uh, your loss for the PPO, you can just add this, uh, this loss, which is LC here, uh, with a, a beta, uh, beta parameter, and uh, that controls uh, how much you care about symmetry versus uh, actually solving the original uh, uh, problem. Uh, the second method uh, uh, that we tried was uh, having a hard constraint on the policy itself. So, uh, so in this method, uh, what we are trying to do is uh, we are making the network architecture actually symmetric. So, uh, and we have a fairly general way of like, if you give me one policy, I can make it uh, completely symmetric. If you already know that half of your time is like uh, the first uh, half of the gait cycle is uh, you're uh, walking with your right, right foot and in the next half you're walking with your left foot, uh, you can just uh, uh, divide that in half and in the first half you don't do anything, but in the second half you completely uh, mirror the states that you give to the policy and you mirror the actions that you get, get out of it. So in practice, what the, the policy only needs to learn uh, one half of the uh, white so, uh, walk cycle, and uh, you just copy that to the other half. Uh, so one more uh, important thing to note here is that uh, the loss method was uh, already uh, introduced uh, last uh, last year, and uh, we we had used phase method uh, in our earlier work, but uh, it was never documented anywhere. So let's look at some of the results. So the baseline is without any enforcement, and all the other are different types of uh, symmetry enforcement methods. And <laughs> so as you can see, that's uh, we're just telling you to model, walk, walk forward and try to be smart. And uh, one interesting thing is that uh, the, you know, baseline in the second uh, uh, environment uh, just doesn't learn to walk at all, but uh, all the other environments do. And we did replicate all the uh, experiments five times, so just cut in part. So, yeah, you can also get funny bugs with this. Great. So, one thing that you might be wondering as you're watching the video is how do we measure uh, uh, the symmetry and how do we say like one uh, walk is better than the other one. So we, experiment, uh, we, uh, we had two metrics that we tried. Uh, one of them is uh, called what we call actual gene symmetry index. And uh, this, uh, uh, this comes from the biomechanics literature and it was used uh, in an early work. Uh, but uh, in practice, we found that even though it, uh, it's a good uh, uh, metric uh, can be misleading and uh, has a lot of scoring uh, edge cases. So uh, what we tried to look at was the phase portrait. Uh, uh, phase portrait. Uh, uh, the idea is pretty simple. You just take one turn and you plot the, uh, the positions and velocities uh, over time. So you get rid of the time and you just uh, get positions and velocities. So if you do this, uh, for example, for the right uh, hip joint and the left hip joint, uh, what you expect from a symmetric gait uh, is that they should uh, uh, completely match each other. So the, the right, uh, right, uh, the color uh, indicates left or right. So we turn that into a scalar uh, that we call the phase board index. Yeah. And we experimented uh, with four environments. Uh, so the first environment is called Walker 2D. It's just an existing environment in Pilot, which is the uh, physics engine that we're, uh, that we're using for D3. Uh, and uh, 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 it's just a uh, constraint to 2D. It just has to walk forward. The second one is what we call Walker 3D. It, just, uh, it, uh, it has a target that passes a little bit harder, has to walk to the target, wait there, and then the target moves and has to walk to the next target. Uh, 
And uh, the third uh, environment here is uh, what we call scatter. Uh, there, uh, and there are these planks, and it has to actually hit the planks to get, uh, get a reward, and, it, uh, and the environment gets harder and harder as it goes on. Like, there's high variations, and it can fall after the last and the last environment, uh, which is a little bit different from the the rest is uh, the Cassie robot. Uh, and the, the important difference is that uh, we call this environment imitation by learning because uh, this has uh, mocap data and it uh, uh, tries to imitate that mocap data. If you've uh, heard about Neatamic, that's what you're doing here. Okay, so let's look at some of the results. So here uh, you're seeing the uh, face plots and the face plot indexes, indices uh, there. Uh, so so what, uh, what you can see here is that like, the, phase, the, the, the baseline is completely asymmetric here, but all the other uh, methods are actually getting, uh, getting you a little bit uh, better symmetry, some, some doing better than others, uh, some not doing uh, so, so well. But uh, so one important distinction I have to make is that for the casting environment, which uh, where we were doing uh, uh, what we call imitation guided learning, uh, the phase uh, method is the best one because there is a natural phase uh, in the uh, in the uh, motion, and we know it. But uh, in the other ones, uh, we were kind of artificially creating the phase. Uh, but uh, in all the other environments, uh, usually the net and the loss are the best ones, and the dot and the phase are uh, going a little bit worse. But uh, all of them are a lot better than the baseline. Yeah. So you can also look at the learning curve. Again, uh, what you see is that for the uh, casting environment, the phase is also, uh, also, uh, on top of giving you better symmetry, is giving you better level of efficiency. Uh, uh, but uh, in all the other environments, uh, the key point I should make is that there is no consistent winner among them. Uh, so some of them work better some, uh, in some environments, but at least if you just look at uh, uh, care about the reward, there is no clear winner. One thing I should mention that uh, here, like this, uh, the baseline, as you saw, actually couldn't uh, walk, uh, uh, but uh, it is getting. Uh, so. So, but uh, all the other ones are actually able to at least uh, produce a like, walking motion. Okay, so there are uh, some things to consider or uh, uh, discuss. Uh, so the first one is uh, what we are uh, enforcing is what, what I call uh, policy symmetry. And that's a little bit different than uh, our, what our goal was, which is the gate symmetry. So what do I mean by that? Uh, and these, uh, these two things can, uh, uh, are not always the same. So you can't have a, a completely symmetric policy, but uh, you can get an asymmetric gate. Uh, so how can that happen? Let's say you, uh, you have a completely symmetric policy and you start from this pose. It might just uh, hop to the right foot. And if you uh, just uh, change the initial position, you get a different walk. But it's, uh, uh, you don't get a symmetric gate. So that's one distinction I should make. And uh, the second point is symmetry might not always be desirable. Uh, uh, why is that? Like, let's say, for example, for manipulation, you, uh, you usually have a dominant limb. Uh, I don't know if uh, that's a quirk of humans or that's the best way to do it, but uh, uh, just uh, keep in mind that symmetry uh, is not the best, uh, might not be the best choice in all situations. And uh, the second thing is that one, uh, one thing that might cause some problems if you are actually implementing in any of these is the neutral space. So what do I mean by that? Let's say uh, I'm starting from a T-pose, I can't do that with the microphone here, but uh, if you start from a T-pose uh, 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 and, uh, and you have a completely symmetric policy, uh, you can't really break the symmetry and uh, you probably end up with a copy gate or something. Uh, but uh, in practice, we, and we saw that the, even though in theory this can be a problem, in practice it wasn't that much of a problem as long as you just uh, start from, uh, with a, a slightly asymmetric uh, 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 state or... Okay. If you don't already uh, start from a completely neutral state, uh, that's, that's good. Or you can just add uh, some extra variables like phase and that uh, uh, helps. Break the same. And yeah, that's most of it. Uh, and yeah, I'm not sure how, uh, how I'm doing that time. 
Uh, okay. So yeah, one more uh, thing that I wanted to mention uh, was that the uh, so with all these uh, four uh, methods that I showed you, the implementation effort uh, is really uh, different. So for example, the uh, the phase environment, uh, uh, the phase method was completely uh, you can just uh, do that in the environment. You don't have to change any of the uh, learning code. Uh, or like, uh, the doc method was uh, the simplest uh, one uh, to make the changes. And we uh, uh, and it's kind of get harder uh, as we uh, go on to the other methods. Uh, no. So what, uh, the conclusions uh, that I wanted to make was uh, were that so symmetry uh, symmetry does increase uh, motion quality. But uh, I, I think that you, should, uh, you, you shouldn't uh, use symmetry just for the learning efficiency uh, because the results weren't completely consistent with that. But uh, uh, the, the third point, uh, point is that if you are doing mutation guided learning, phase is the best. But otherwise, just choose the easiest method to implement, and any, any of them are just going to improve the function quality. If I just completely uh, move my character, th th that still should be. Uh, I, I expect the, my, my character to do the same thing, but the, with the, the other hand. So I think that that, that is a valid concern. But uh, I think that usually, uh, 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 usually the, these won't uh, make a lot of pro problem for you as long as you can just fix your environment. So some of this may be pretty complicated, but your scene becomes complicated. Yes. Uh, Yes, I do see it becoming com complicated. Like for example, one problem uh, of manipulation that I, th I thought was interesting was like if I'm uh, standing like this, uh, because of the like it's kind of a neutral position, and like if I, probably if you had a symmetric policy, it would just go grab it with both hands. But, uh, it wouldn't really pick one or the other, uh, and that is part of one uh, limitation. So that was one question. Yes. Um, have you analyzed your metrics on? Um, have you analyzed your metrics on uh, real motion capture data? Because I mean, most of the people don't really walk in 100% symmetric, and, and 
kind of as well depends on, on the environment, whether there are kind of gaps or whether it's flat ground. Yes. Uh, no, we didn't actually do that, but uh, yes, I, I, I agree with you. And I, uh, so, uh, so actually, like even in our environments, they're not going to do the same, uh, be a, give you a completely symmetric gate if the, uh, like, uh, if the environment is not symmetric. Let's, let's say that there's some, uh, something uh, on the ground or the, uh, uh, or the goal is in there instead of like uh, right in front of me. So we actually have to. <laughs> this like this. Uh, so if you, uh, so yeah, yes, I think uh, that, that is a good uh, thing to, uh, yeah, in this case. Yeah.